Hi, welcome to Falcon's Fermentations. Today we're going to be making a fermentation chamber. Uh, I'm going to be making it out of a old, very well loved and used uh, mini fridge. So let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we have some uh, algae, rust, and things to take care of on the outside, but that's not really a big deal. The inside is what we're really worried about. If you're going to get yourself a used one, you want to make sure that everything inside is not rusted or you don't have some kind of mold growing inside because if you're going to put something like, you know, a food item that's going to sit in here for anywhere between two weeks and six months, you want to make sure that you don't have something nasty inside of it. Luckily for me, this one didn't require, it won't require any kind of real or significant changes to this. Uh, all I have to do is just take this pan here and move it down. Uh, just make sure you don't bend the uh, tube inside of here because if you do this thing is kaput if you break any of these lines that are inside of here or scrape or cut or ding or nick same thing but uh, let's go ahead and get this thing cleaned up all right and everything's clean depending on your model you may have anything that's holding it up from screws to uh, metal p or metal rivets if they're rivets, you're probably going to have to use a Dremel to remove them. However, uh, I was lucky and these are just little plastic nubs and all you have to do is just slide the whole unit forward. This needs to come off because it's the temperature uh, gauge and it will not really be used very much at all, but I'm going to put it back later. It's just got a single screw in the back. just to get it out of the way. Inside, I'm going to go and add a small screw into the side to keep this thing upright. But I'm not going to go very far and I'm not going to just to kind of keep it upright and level so I don't knock it around when I'm moving things. If you go too deep inside, you'll, uh, you may actually puncture one of the lines in the walls. And if you do that, it's toast. So why I said I got lucky is that I have just enough clearance here to be able to put a blow off tube. So I can uh, fashion a blow off tube that goes at a right angle and then comes down the side of here and then sits right here with its uh, sanitized water to let the fermentation, uh, the gases escape from the fermenter. So this is just your standard, uh, what does it say, 6.5 gallon uh, or seven gallon uh, for Monster. So your other option is to put it here at the bottom. However, if you do this, the door won't actually close even with this uh, taken off it still has a small gap for mine at least but for uh, for most people's it's going to be the same issue 
can't remove any material out from the back part here. And the reason being is that that's where your compressor lies. So if you try and take anything outside of that compressor or take any of that away, you'll be digging into your compressor and you'll have to have the compressor on the outside of the unit, which is not gonna be easy to do. So the other option is to take all of this off, including the door and put two by fours all around here glue and drill into the door frame itself and then uh, paint seal and uh, insulate all of that and then mount this door onto that i didn't want to do that and luckily i am able to just have this piece of glass which should support the weight of about five gallons i'm not going to put more than five gallons in here at a time So I can just keep my Vermonster right here with some of the weight being bared on that. So now on to fixing this thing up and making it look pretty. All right, now that it's painted and everything's done on the inside, we can go ahead and move this thing to the garage and start uh, working on some of the more internal components. Well, it's just one little thing, but we'll be done. Now that this is indoors, we're gonna go ahead and get the temperature sensor of what's called an inkbird. Inkbirds are a uh, temperature regulation system for fermentation chambers, as well as really anything that you want. But specifically, they're just used to regulate uh, the temperature inside of refrigerators by uh, setting a uh, temperature uh, high and low and then you plug in the uh, unit itself into it so that way when it reaches a certain cold temperature it just shuts the whole unit off and then whenever you need to heat it back up so say it gets too cold um, and you don't want it to go below a certain degree it has a heating unit that comes back up uh, it's also good for winter since this is in the garage I don't have a heating element and I'm probably not going to use one anytime soon so we'll just skip that for now so it's a fairly simple procedure, just feeding the temperature gauge in here and using some duct tape, adhesive, uh, anything that you really want to get this to stick. It doesn't need to be a whole lot. It just needs to be able to stay in place and uh, I'm not sure exactly where it needs to go. However, I'm going to just continue to adjust it as needed and then maybe say something about it later. But that's all it needs to be here for now. Let me put another piece there for wire management. seal and then I'm going to just attach this using magnets to the back of here so I'm just going to give this thing a rough measurement out on here You'll want to refer to your manual on how you need it to be set. I just want it to test out to 70 degrees and then shut off. So it's just blinking showing that it's uh, at about 86.6 degrees Fahrenheit and that's, that's okay. Um, I just want it to run, turn off, and then I'm going to check the temperature manually. I've already tested the uh, temperature of this and it does get down. Um, it seems like I did not break or bend anything in here or in here. Remember, if you do break or bend anything inside of these lines or even within the walls this will no longer work you've punctured it and there's no real way to fix it i mean you can but you'd have to dig out the material and uh, seal it 
basically soldering it and then refill this thing, it would be far more expensive than just to replace. Um, you can get these mini fridges practically for free. I got mine for free. I was uh, lucky enough uh, that I was helping my mother out um, and uh, she just happened to have one of these lying around. She just asked if you wanted it. But you can find these things on Craigslist or uh, sometimes local eBay or uh, Facebook Market for anywhere between free and uh, most I've seen them for is going for $45. So this is not a very expensive project. The most expensive part of this is actually the ink bird. Uh, I'm not sure of current prices, um, but they tend to re uh, reside around 50 something dollars. And you also don't have to do what I did, which is paint this thing to look like a king cold. Um, I, w I have a uh, kegerator behind me that I did a little while back. And uh, I made that one into freezer as a internet meme joke, because why not? Uh, so the only thing I've done so far is just clean and sanitize everything. So I just use simple green to clean everything and uh, make it look pretty and uh, get some of the scum that was inside of here off. And then I went back and sanitized it using uh, a, a mixture of star sam. So that way I don't have to worry about um, something floating around inside of here. And if you've been asking yourself this entire time, what on earth is a fermentation chamber? A fermentation chamber is for lagering, keeping your beer, wine, mead, literally anything that you want to ferment uh, at a specific temperature range. Some yeasts don't like to be above 70 degrees, some don't like to be below 70 degrees. Um, if uh, your house resides warm like mine does sometimes, um, it can cause them to become overactive and produce off flavors. So I just happen to have this here and I wanted to start doing lagering. And uh, loggers like to reside at temperatures closer towards 40 and 50 degrees than they do in normal temperatures, which is why they were traditionally made in the winter, not the summer. We're just gonna go ahead and uh, call this done. Uh, thank you very much for watching. This is my first video. Uh, like and subscribe, people. Thank you so much.